Matt Murdock will stop at nothing to bring down Wilson Fisk, the kingpin and new mayor of New York. What will that mean? Well, let's hop on in together to Daredevil issue number 606 and find out. Alrighty then, so picking up with this newest arc, we actually get some fallout from the previous arc. As I mentioned before, Wilson Fisk is now mayor of New York, and he was just embarrassed by the hand, which means he's shown weakness, and because of that, New York's criminal underworld has turned into the Wild West, with everyone, including perennial D-lister Hammerhead, all jockeying for control and recognition. So much to the point he's decided to set up an actual bank robbery, something no self-respecting criminal does anymore. It's too dangerous and you can steal more with a laptop these days anyway. Daredevil makes the scene to break up the robbery and we're treated to our first of what will be many beautiful Phil Noto pages. Ah, finally this series has an art team that can stand up to Soul's writing. But how did we get here? For that, we flash back to Daredevil meeting Frank McGee, the former head of Inhuman security, now just kind of the head of nothing now, but hey, you know what, I'm sure he's gonna survive Death of the Inhumans and that's the important thing. Now before McGee got hit with Terrigen Mist and was given superpowers, he was an NYPD cop for 26 years, so he's had more than his fair share of run-ins with the Kingpin and his cronies, and as such, he's as sick as anyone at the idea of this dude holding the highest office. Daredevil says with his superhero connections, as well as his friend Matt Murdock being able to push things through in the district attorney's office, if they work together, he thinks that they can unravel the conspiracy that swept Kingpin into office and defeat him once and for all. This is going to be a lot more than a two-man operation. Luckily, Frank McGee not only has some names in mind, but he has a base of operations, a condemned library because, well, you know, like Amazon and everything, no one actually reads books anymore. Who's on the team? Well, we got Cypher, my favorite X-Men eye roll. He and Daredevil had previously worked together during the hunt for Wolverine. I doubt they ever found him, but hey, who's keeping track? Certainly not me. As well as Reader, yeah, that's right, the other genuinely cool, genuinely badass new Inhuman that Charles Souls created who will hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to survive the death of the Inhumans. It's also pretty fun to note that Reader is blind, Daredevil is blind, but he doesn't want to out himself as being Matt Murdock, so he has to pretend that he can see in front of this other blind guy. The first meeting of the No Fisks Club is going to have to be put on hold, though, because Daredevil ends up catching a police radio signal about the bank robbery. Another interesting thing about Hammerhead is how he's changed tactics. His guys aren't carrying regular guns anymore, they're carrying nail guns, which even Matt Murdock has to admit is pretty damn hilarious and pretty good theming. How did it take him so long to get here? However, comedy quickly turns to tragedy when our hero discovers that Hammerhead never actually wanted any of the money in the bank. He only wanted a large audience so he could commit some acts of terror and remind everyone that he's a big bad crook. His goons take several hostages and Daredevil is unsure if he can even save them all, let alone alone himself. Luckily, one of the hostages has the heart of a hero, manages to pull deep down inside, free himself, and give Daredevil the chance to incapacitate everyone else, saving the day. It is, however, a major shock to the system, to the man without fear. He's been so consumed about trying to depose the Kingpin that D-listers like Hammerhead were actually able to get the drop on him. Daredevil figures if he ever wants to get on top of this emerging gang war, he's going to have to have some eyes and ears on the street, and from there, we transition on over to the bar with no name, the famous hangout for the costumed criminal set. It's here we see a familiar face drinking, Mike Murdock. Yeah, who's Mike Murdock, you might be wondering? Well, he was another persona invented by Matt Murdock back in the 60s to basically explain away to Foggy Nelson and Karen Page about how sometimes he could see. At first glance, it would seem that Matt has dusted off the old Mike persona to be his own personal gangland matches Malone, allowing him to get into where all the criminals congregate. Oh, but the truth is far strange stranger than that. You see, Mike ends up starting a bar fight after hitting on a supervillain's wife. Who should respond to this fight? Well, Daredevil. Which, as the comic winds down, would seek to imply that Mike Murdock is no longer a creation of Matt Murdock's mind, but his own thinking, feeling person. Oh boy. So that was Daredevil issue number 606, everybody, and overall I thought this arc got off to a really good start. I like the idea of Daredevil kind of building his own team, independent of the defense the Avengers, and anything like that. It's his own personal thing tied to his own more personal goals. 
Mike Murdoch returning is a truly inspired piece of writing from Charles Soule, proof that he actually does know this character's history frontwards and backwards, and he seems to have a hell of a pitch going on. I think we can start taking bets now as to what the answer could possibly be. Did Mike become his own person after the events of Secret Wars? Is this more Purple Man shenanigans? Did Matt get hit with a genome accelerator? Oh, no, wait, that's Spider-Man. Spider-Man's doing that now. And of course, I can't forget Noto's art. This guy has a fan following all his own, and I really, really hope it gets more eyes on Daredevil because it has been so good and yet it is so underrated. Overall, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10. Really solid stuff. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some more content from my channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I got coming out next. And hey, if you really like what I do, you could become a patron. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and they can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And with that everyone, I will bid you adieu, and I will be back again with more comic content that... Smack some greatness. Bye-bye, everyone.